G'day, mates. In this videotape, we're going to take a look at Multicam Editor and make sure you're getting the most out of this program. It was written for using with a two-camera wedding shoot or five-camera theater production, or you could even take 50 different camera angles of a band and synchronize them together into a camera bank ready for switching. The first step is to digitize each of your cameras into separate clips. Then we'll create the bank and start switching. When we synchronize the cameras, we're going to do it twice. First time, we'll go through and use my default settings to do it rather quickly. Then we're going to come back through a second time and look at all your options, see what else you can do. So let's begin. Uh, before we get started, let me tell you about my setup here. I have the control feed from the flyer, and then there are two BNC outputs from the flyer. The first one is the program output, the one that goes to tape, and the second one is the preview output. Now, you may not have been using that second BNC for a preview with regular flyer editing, but with multi-cam editor, it's rather handy. We can be watching a video clip from one of your A drives and at the same time see a second video clip rolling in sync from one of your B drives. This is handy when you're trying to pick your shot. So let's start up multi-cam editor. All of the Osware programs are begun from Copilot now. So you can start Copilot with your hotkey, left Amiga C, or if you prefer, click on the Start Copilot icon on your workbench. Here I've left it out on my workbench screen. This takes us into a screen called Copilot Master. From here we have access to all of the Osware programs, or at least all the ones that you own. Here we're interested in Multicam, so we'll click on that and go into Multicam Editor. Straight off it says G'day, and then wants to know if you're using this extra monitor. So we're going to click on Extra Monitor On. This is the Multicam Editor main menu. A couple of buttons across the top here. We have two functions at the moment. Once we've created a camera bank, there'll be a few more functions across here. One of the things with Multicam Editor is that you can click on any command with your right mouse button, and it'll tell you more about that button. We're interested in syncing the cameras. I'll click on it with the right mouse button there. It gives us two steps. First to place the camera clips in a row in your project screen and set each clip's in point to the same matching frame. Then we're going to come back here. So we're going to do this step. We'll jump over to our flyer. There's a button in the top right corner. And go find our camera clips. I have two of my cameras over on my B drive. So camera one and there's camera four. And on my A drive, camera two and three. I'll just move four down to the end. Now we want to set a matching frame for each of the cameras. Now often what you could use is a flash bulb. While you're shooting, if you flashed in the room once, you'd see that flash in all of the cameras. And that's rather handy, and in many instances, particularly weddings, no one really notices a flash popping, but if you went up there with a slate board, they would. But in actuality, you can use any frame. I'm going to whip along here to the point where this actor gets out of his wheelchair. Today is Burger's birthday. Oh, there it goes. So it's a good action visual. Step in there. There. Right where his body's moving the most. I've set that in point. I'm going to find a similar in point on each of these other cameras. It would be roughly about the same spot, around 433. There it goes. I'd say it's that frame. Now you'll notice that I'm using a visual to sync up the cameras. When we originally shot this, we had good sound to one camera, but the other ones had a different feed. So. Their audio might have been delayed because of about a 60-foot distance. So you've got to be careful of trying to just sync to the sound. Let's see, we're about 433. Here he goes. Big body movement right there. And our last camera. Tell him it's off. Yeah. 
So we have four cameras and we're ready to create a camera bank. Now we highlight the first camera for the clips that we want to use in our camera bank. Jump back to the multicam editor screen. We'll use the Copilot hotkey, left Amiga C, and click on the button called Sync Cameras. We have a choice of creating a camera bank that is with two to five cameras or with six to 50. We'll use the two to five camera button. Here we see a screen that allows us to test and adjust the sync of the individual cameras. We have a graphic that is showing where the different cameras start and run out in relationship to each other. A slider just below it that allows us to pick a point within these clips. Here's our camera bank. You could pick on a number and be working with a different camera. Down here we can adjust the sync of each of the cameras and test the playback between them. Let's test camera one to camera two. We'll see some playback down here on the program. Let's test it in a different spot. Slide this back down here. Rolls a few seconds of the first yes, shot. that's what makes democracy interesting. Went to the other camera. Looks like we're in sync. Now we could continue testing the different cameras, say one and three. Yes, that's what makes democracy interesting. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's do uh, three and four this time. Yes, that's what makes democracy interesting. Looks like we're in sync. Now, there's more choices here. We'll come back and look at that in a little bit. Right now, I just want to save the camera bank. The camera banks are saved into a folder in your project drawer. I'll give this the name Doug1. And it asks whether we want to put a crouton in your project that represents the camera bank. Well, I'm not going to do too much, so I'm going to say no, not needed. But that crouton can be very handy if you were creating a number of camera banks within a very large project. When we return to our menu screen, we'll see that we have a few more options available because we have a camera bank now. We can go back into our sync screen and readjust the sync. We can activate some of Multicam Editor's audio tools, or we could even start Multicam Editing. Multicam Editor has a number of audio tools to help refine your camera bank. Often when I'm shooting, I've got good sound to one camera, but not to the others. So we have a tool to copy the good camera sound to all your other cameras. We could also take the good camera sound and make an audio clip that could be used throughout your project. Where this all comes together is in picking your audio editing style. Multicam Editor gives you three choices. We can use the original camera sound, keeping that on through the edit, which gives you the most flexibility later if you want to remove a few frames. Second choice is to use an audio clip as your audio editing style. That would turn off the camera sound and place a single audio clip that would play throughout. A third choice we have is called both. You've got the cameras rolling and an audio clip. Well, I would see that being used for a sports event, perhaps, where you want the location sound from each camera as the cars go racing by, and your audio clip would be a narrator. You just throw that into your camera bank when you first create it. So let's take a look at audio tools for multicam editing. We'll click on the audio tools button. And here's our familiar camera bank and a number of audio tool options. The top one is copy camera sound. Well, when I shot this production, I had good sound on camera four, but I didn't have good sound on the other cameras. So I'd want to copy camera four to all cameras. Just click on the copy audio button. It estimates the amount of time as being about 38 minutes. Well, I've already done this to the bank so that we don't have to sit here. I'm gonna cancel out of that. This feature, copy camera sound, is terrific. It was given to Multicam Editor from the fine folks at ProWave. They've written a program called ProMix, which lets you manipulate your sound and bounce it between different clips, along with lots of other features. A second choice we have is to create an audio clip. Again, if I wanted to do that, I would select the camera and tell it to create the audio file. It will then add it to the camera bank. This audio clip can be used under visual cutaways or even throughout your entire edit. 
The next choice is to adjust the default audio levels of each of the clips. The very important one is to pick your audio editing style. In this case, I'm going to use the camera sound. Now we're ready to go to our editing. Here's our editing screen. Across here, again the graphic, our camera bank for selection, and here are some editing controls. The area that we're going to be interested in right now is the camera bank and the area down here. Once we start editing, Multicam Editor will keep each camera in sync to the previous shot. At the moment, we have an empty project, so we need to use the new sync button to establish the first shot. I'm going to pick camera two and click on new sync. Now we set an in and an out for the first shot. I'm going to go about a minute and a half into the project. Yeah, I think I want to start there. And I'll pick an out point for this first shot. Today is Justice Harry Blackman's birthday. He's only 67. A little further. Hours, all nine of us will gather in the dining room in Harry's honor, and let's go to there. All right. Now we'll see that there's a number of new things have appeared on our screen. Up here, we have the flyer project starting to appear. It's very much the same as you see on your flyer screen. Our timeline here is starting to display that we used camera two in this section, and that's the point that we're editing next. Now, once we have a sync point, Multicam Editor can start syncing the other cameras. For example, if I wanted to see where camera one was at this point, I could click on its crouton, and a still will appear showing its in point. We could look at three, four, or even the previous shot, camera two. Uh, let's try a preview now. We'll go from camera two to camera four. Click on the preview button, and multi-camera editor takes a moment and cues up the video. Warren Burger will make well, I didn't like that time. shot. I'm going to click on stop because I really don't want that edit. Go from camera two to camera one. We'll do preview again. You'll notice it plays a few seconds of the previous shot. In Harry's honor and, and then performs Burger the edit. Will make the announcement of my retirement. Well, that uh, was pretty good. I think we'll take one more look at another camera. Camera three. Honor and <laughs> That's the shot. Now, if I like that edit, I can mark an out point over here. Right there. He's about to turn around to another camera. Let's review what we've just accomplished. We had a preview. We're able to play a few seconds of the previous camera clip, cut in sync to the selected camera. And then on the fly, we could enter the out point for that camera. We did it by clicking on that button named Add, Edit, and Stop. You could actually edit your whole piece this way. That's all you need. We have a few other tricks that can help out here, too. Let's try another one. Camera one, we'll do a preview. There, who could fill this chair? Well, that's too similar a shot. I don't want it. Now, before, we were clicking stop and picking another camera. Well, we can cut down a step here. Let's just pick the camera straight off. Camera two, replay. It goes back, and it gives you the same preview again, but with a different camera. There, who could fill this chair? That chair, that's the one that counts. That's pretty good. Let's try another one. We're on camera three, so the other choice is camera four. Again, I'll click on the replay. Now, notice that I'm picking the camera number up here. Don't be clicking the crouton. We'll tell you about that more later. Click on replay. And we'll see that edit again now, going from camera three to camera four. There, who could fill this chair? That chair. 
That's the one that counts. I think I'll go with that. You'll see that our preview monitor over here is rolling. It kept the previous camera rolling because it was on a separate drive chain. I'm just going to replay that one more time and mark an out point on the fly. There who could fill this chair. That chair. That's the one that counts. And anybody with a little bad luck could fill this one. Okay, I'll go there. We clicked Add Edit in Stop. And we're ready to proceed again. So that replay button can save you a few steps. Let's look at some other ideas here. Let's, we've got camera four, so let's see what camera two is doing. Looks like it's moving a little bit. One. Well, let's, let's do an edit with camera two. Buddy, with a little bad luck, could fill this one. But I don't believe there is Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to take this edit. Mark the edit and stopped it. Adds it into our project. Now, that wasn't a very good shot. Let's say I wanted to get rid of it. We can go to our flyer screen. You'll see that we've simply been building a flyer project all along. There's nothing different here. You can do everything that you could do from the flyer as per normal, such as playing from a certain clip or playing the whole project. In fact, often you may not like the last camera you've edited. Well, we can just highlight it and delete. Now highlight where you do want to pick up and jump back to the multicam editor screen. You can click on refresh if you like. If you clicked on any other command, it would actually do the refresh automatically. Let's try another camera, camera one. Buddy with a little bad luck could fill this one. But I don't believe That's pretty good. Let's look at a new feature down here called mark. I can mark repeatedly a spot, like that's my edit point. No, there. I don't. No, there. As far as I know, I have been on the right side of every issue. I'm going with this spot here. So I've marked it. Let's do the add, edit, and stop. It will use this last marked spot. So you can enter in repeatedly the spot that you want to use for the edit. So far, we've been doing everything in a quasi-real time with preview. Another way to edit is with this jog button. Now, why you might use this, let's say you have a boring subject. You've got the president from a company, and he's in front of a slide screen. And you really don't want to listen through every word of his lecture again. So all you want to do is shuttle ahead and find the next point where he points at the screen. So we'll use jog here. Let's go to, uh, coming from camera one, Go to camera three. We know multicam editor is going to start the camera in sync. It says that the edit starts at 2.30.28 and to set a higher out point. Well, we could slide that down there is about where it's starting. So you could actually whip ahead until the person pointed at that screen again and jump over a lot of footage and actually edit faster than real time. For the moment, let's see where we are. I fouled up on the Gobitis case was because I listened to Felix Frankfurter. Should have known better even then not to listen to anybody, let alone Felix. I'm going to go there. Click continue. So we didn't actually have to preview to perform an edit. We could use the jog and shuttle ahead quickly. There's a way of combining preview and jog. Let's start a preview from our camera three down to camera four. To listen to anybody, let alone Felix. So many people are so wrong. I like that edit point. So down here we can click on Add Edit, then Jog. It accepts the edit. The in point's fine. The camera's fine. Now we just need to set a number higher than that where the edit begins. And I think what I want is sort of at the end of that zoom. between a sentence right there. Let's try that. All right, let's do one more edit. Um, what are these cameras doing? Let's see them in a still. Let's see, I'm coming from my side shot. 
Definitely. We'll do one more preview here. Makes democracy interesting. I am the longest sitting justice. Now, we could actually even add a fade in here. We've been performing cuts only. There's one button, we'll explore the rest of these later, but there's one button where you could set a fade, say, to one second. And let's replay. Now, the fade is inserted into the project, but we're not previewing it right now. Democracy interesting. I am the longest sitting I'll do add edit, then jog again. Pick a number higher than the number displayed. I'm just going to come up. That'll do. And you'll see that the fade actually got inserted into your project. There it is. From our flyer screen, you could highlight that, do a play from, and then I'll click OK to play, and the flyer will play us the scene with the fade. I am the longest sitting justice in the history of the Supreme Court. I'll jump back over to our multi-cam screen. I'm just going to turn the fade back off again. Now I want to show you one more trick before we wrap up this section of multi-cam editor. So far when we've been editing, we've been using the add edit buttons to mark the end point and also the mark button to mark it. There is another way and you can add the pressure of real camera switching here. Let's try this. We're coming out of camera one. We'll go into camera three and start a preview. In high country in the cascades. I am 77. I am okay, when I want to switch to another camera, I could actually just switch on the camera crouton. Right there. It will perform the edit, select the next camera, and start the next preview all in one move. And if sometimes your preview doesn't work right, just click on the replay button. It'll usually work the second time. A few years ago and I broke my ribs. Oh, they didn't think I'd make it. So again, if we wanted to switch to another camera. But that I'm too old? That's nonsense. A horse. Right there. So simply clicking on the crouton does a whole bunch of steps in a row. But that I'm too old? That's nonsense. A horse fell on top of me. Do you ever have a horse fall on top of you? <laughs> okay, we'll stop there. In this section, we've covered a lot of different things. We looked at putting our first edit in and using the new sync button. Then we experimented with previewing, uh, where we have a real-time preview with a few seconds before of the previous shot and rolling the next shot. We learned how to use the add, edit, and stop the add, edit, and jog, and also that mark button where we can mark things on the fly and keep repeatedly picking an out point. And lastly, we learned how to click on a crouton during the middle of a preview so that we can actually perform the last edit, switch cameras, and go straight into another preview. Why don't you take a few minutes now and experiment with Multicam Editor on your own? Then we'll come back together and look through a few of the other operations in a bit more detail. Ray. That's my beer. In this next short section, I'd like to take a look at some of the finer details of working with Multicam Editor. Now, originally when we created our camera bank before, we put the cameras up into an empty project screen. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you might have other croutons there already, and you're adding multi-camera to the end of it. Well, we can create a bank even with clips in our project. For example, we could drag a couple of cameras up here on the end of our project and set a new syncing point. We'd set a matching frame on both cameras again. Then with that clip highlighted, you're ready to synchronize your camera bank. If you had other croutons afterwards, you could even add a stop icon after. Multicam Editor will synchronize each of the clips between the highlighted crouton and the stop icon. I'm going to get rid of those two shots because I don't really need them. We'll come back over to our main screen. The quit button at the top has a nice feature. Let's say you've been editing for a while and you want to jump away to some other task, such as doing a music mix or doing some light wave. You can shut down Multicam Editor, but keep the bank open. 
when you come back into multicam editor later, you'll have your bank still there. Please note that the main screens in multicam editor use a lot more chip memory than our other Osware programs. Here we need a high-res interlace display with 32 colors so that we can reasonably show your camera croutons. For the sake of chip memory, you may wish to shut down applications like Toaster Paint and CG before running Multicam Editor. Likewise, close Multicam Editor when you need memory for other uses. We can also load a bank. We can load it from a file. I'll load this one in, called Doug A. A second way you can load a bank is from a crouton. We mentioned before that when you synchronize the camera bank, it has the option of putting a crouton into your flyer project. If you had many multi-camera banks throughout a long project, you could simply highlight one of those and click here. Readjust sync. Usually you don't want to use that after you've created a camera bank and you've been editing because it could mess up previous edits you have in your project. For the moment though, I want to go in and look at one button that we skipped over before. It's over here. It's called Match Times. I'll click on it. The default setting is to skip the match, which means nothing is going to happen to your clips at all. Sometimes, though, it's nice to set each of your camera clips so that they have the identical time code number at the matching frame. You do this by selecting Match Clips. If I was to save right now, then the camera bank will be reset with offsets at the starting times of each of the clips so that they will show the same time code number on all the clips at the same frame. You can even enter your own number. If you wanted the camera bank to say start 11 hours, we're done. You're gonna reset that back to the minimum time and exit from here without making any changes. Let's go and take one look now at the audio tools. You'll notice that the camera bank that I've loaded has an audio clip in it already. I did this by selecting Create Audio Clip, picking the camera that had my good sound, and checking the button named Create New Audio File. It will ask which drive you'd like to put the audio clip on. It will synchronize it into the camera bank and add it to your screen. Now that we have an audio clip in our camera bank, we can use our audio editing style in a number of different ways. The way we have it set right now, we're using the camera sound. Multicam Editor is going to prioritize using the sound from the actual camera clips throughout the project. Whenever it hits something where the camera is not rolling, it will roll this audio clip instead. An example would be a visual cutaway, a black, or some title that you might be inserting later on. My favorite way of working, just by the way, is to copy the camera sound to the other cameras and still use an audio clip. Then, if I need to do any really fine editing in my project, after I've done all my multi-camera switching, I can go in anywhere and just cut out a couple of frames, and I don't have to worry about keeping this audio clip in sync through the whole sequence. The second way of working is with audio clip as your audio editing style. Now multi-cam editor turns off the sound from the cameras, and uses the audio clip throughout the project. So we're going to use an audio editing style of audio clip and take a look at how we edit with that. We're going to tag on to the end of the project. I'm just going to jump over and highlight where we we're working from before, the last crouton. Come back and refresh the screen. Now that we have an audio clip in our camera bank, you'll notice a couple of new buttons on the screen, allowing audio plus cutaway and audio plus black. We'll come back and look at those in just a moment. Now we want to start editing a new section, so we need to push the new sync button. I'll select, oh, we'll stay with camera one. We set in point for the shot, and an out point for the shot. I'll bring it as his head comes up and continue. Now let's see how it handles the audio clip. There's the new sync. There's the camera one. And straight after it, put an audio clip. This audio clip is set to play under anything else that follows. 
Let's do a preview to camera four. Get me off it. I do that to people. So the editing is pretty much the same as we did before. Let's take a look now across this section of the screen. On the left, we have an item called Last Edit Trim. This allows us to adjust the edit point of the preview that we just saw. For example, let's get the preview rolling again and notice where the cut is. Get me off it. I do that to people. Let's say I wanted that edit point a couple of seconds later. Let's go three seconds later. We set the trim and click on replay. I do that to people. You can't believe how many times I have been... Let's even go a few seconds later. So you can adjust the trim while the preview is playing, then just click replay and you'll see the new preview. You can't believe how many times I have been threatened, cajoled, begged... I can clear this number by clicking on the numbers. And I'll stop. Selecting the stop button stops the preview cycle. This means that the edit that you are previewing is not added to your project, since we never set an out point. Otherwise, to keep the last edit, you should use the add edit and stop command instead. Here's how I like to edit. First, I watch the start of the preview and pay close attention to the edit point. If needed, I change cameras by clicking on a camera number in the bank, or I adjust the last edit trim and immediately select replay to preview again. When I'm happy with how this edit starts, I let the preview roll and use the mark button or directly click on a camera crouton when I'm ready to switch and start the next preview. Located next to last edit trim is a small button named set. This button locks the last edit trim setting into all following edits. This could be handy if you are consistently trimming your edits by the same amount. Enter a trim value and click on set, and then every edit that follows will be trimmed automatically. A second use is for deliberate late switching. Some folks like to edit by watching a camera and switching after the shot messes up. You could enter a trim of minus one or minus two seconds and click on set, and all edits will automatically be trimmed. Next to the last edit trim is an area reserved for audio control. This will change depending on whether your audio editing style is using the audio clip or the camera sound. Here, we have the audio clip playing. We could have both playing, though. Now I've got the camera turned on as well. We can set a level for it, and the camera sound will be added to the next edit. I'll turn that back off. We've already looked at cuts and fades. You don't get to see them during the preview, but they go into your project and they're ready to play. Below it is an interesting one called Jog With. This uses the jog control, but allows you to look at a different camera than the one you're actually editing. Why would you do this? Let's say we've got camera one and it's looking good. We like how it edits, we like how it begins, but we're not sure when we want camera one to end. The question is, is when does camera two look good? Let's say it's doing a zoom, we want to mark where the zoom ends so that we're ready when the shot is stable. What you do is tell it that you want to jog with camera two, but still edit camera one. Now when you click jog, you'll be setting the point based on camera two. But after you accept the jog settings and click continue, the edit will be performed with camera one synchronized to that point you just marked. Another use for that is for working with an audio clip. Let's say that you're working to a music soundtrack and you want to cut directly to that audio clip, then every mark that you do with the jog now will be set to one of the cameras that you have selected. Here's another good use of jog with. When I shoot with three or more cameras, I often rent a quad split unit, which is a video device normally used for closed circuit security cameras. At the shoot, I feed all cameras through the quad split unit and onto VHS tape. Furthermore, I feed the program audio to one channel and the director's voice to the other, 
helping me know later when a camera is about to move. Now you can digitize that onto the flyer in the lowest resolution. You need to place it within the first five cameras of your multicam camera bank so that you can access it with our jog with control. Now you're ready to perform all of your multicam editing to this clip. and turn that back off. Now we have already looked at a little bit of new sync and below it is another button called stop sync. Before when we used new sync we used it to establish a new section of synchronized clips. Now whenever we're editing away if I find a spot where my actor stumbles or my cameras mess up I can drop out a couple of seconds. What you do is simply click the new sync and set a new sync point and continue editing from then. The space in between will be left out. If you wanted to stop multicam editing and go back to a regular editing for a while, you would use the stop sync button, the one underneath. This puts in the stop marker, and if your editing style has been using an audio clip, it will search back and find that audio clip and set its out point accordingly. So you use the new sync if you are simply leaving out a section and continuing with multicam editing, or you'd use stop sync if you've reached the end of all your multicam editing sections altogether and want to go back to regular flyer editing. The last thing I'd like to show you is over here, putting in cutaways into your multi-camera edit. Now putting a cutaway into any type of edit can be tricky, and with a multi-camera where you're trying to keep the cameras in sync, it could be a nightmare. Not so, I think you'll like this. We'll jump over to our flyer screen, and I'm going to ask you to use your imagination here and pretend that these are two cutaways that actually relate to this project. You'd put them in after the current spot where you're working and set their in point to an appropriate spot. Then highlight the last clip where we were working and come back to the multi-cam screen. We'll select audio with cutaway and you'll see a new crouton has appeared. We're ready now to preview from camera one to the cutaway. We'll click on preview me off it. I do that to people. And I'll add the edit. So it's sucked in the camera clip into our multi-cam. And it's put the next cutaway up there ready for us to go. Let's do another preview. I do that to people. You can't believe how many times... Well, my water sounds a little loud, so I'm going to turn that down there. Let's just replay that one more time. I do that to people. You can't believe how many times I have been threatened... And I'll cut out and finish the edit. And we could go back to regular editing. So all you need to do is put your different cutaways after the current spot you're working. If I had a game show, I could put in, say, 20 different audience applause shots. And then whenever I need, while I'm in the middle of my switching, just click over to audio cutaway and suck in the next audience applause, then switch back out to another camera again. Doesn't get much easier than that. A second way to reserve space for a visual is to use the button named Audio Plus Black. How this works, it does the preview of the edit and it keeps the audio clip rolling, but it inserts a black crouton for the length of the edit. Then you go back to your regular editing. Later on, when you've got a title or some cutaway that you want to put in there, you can simply drag it on top and inherit its value. Well, I hope this videotape gives you a better understanding of using Multicam Editor. My original goal was to keep those cameras in sync. Next, I want to take on really maximizing your drive space so we get the most use out of it. So till then, cheers mate. I've got to edit this piece. I better get to work.